Hi, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to learn how we can create SVG fonts in Inkscape. To help with making the characters of our font more uniform, we're going to use the Typography Canvas template that Inkscape provides for us. We can do this by going to File, New from Template, then selecting Typography Canvas in the list here, then clicking Create from Template. We now get a new document with the page of the canvas marked with guidelines for all of the font attributes we need to take into account when creating a font. Baseline here refers to a line that goes across the bottom of the text while disregarding the tails that some lowercase letters like Y's and J's have. So baseline is where the bottom of most characters in our font should begin. For letters with tails, the tails should extend down to the descender line here. The line above baseline, X height, refers to the height of a lowercase x. Between baseline and X height is where we draw most lowercase letters. Some lowercase letters, like B's, will of course extend beyond X height. The next line, caps, is where the top of most capital letters should reach. And finally, ascender is for capital letters that have parts that might extend a bit beyond caps. This is common with serif fonts. Okay, for drawing the characters of a font, we can use shapes created with the shape tools, or we can use paths. I'll use the calligraphy tool for mine. And for the first character, I'll draw a capital A. Alright, now that we have our first character drawn, it's time to create a font and add the character to it. We do this with the SVG Font Editor dialog, which we can open by going to Text, SVG Font Editor. Now we have it open over here on the right. The first thing we see is this list of fonts we've created. We haven't created any yet, so let's create one by clicking the New button down here. Now we get a new font labeled Font1, which we can select. We can also click it again to rename it if we want. Next we have this Global Settings tab, in which we can set the font attributes and the font face attributes. For font attributes, we can set Horizontal Advanced X, which is the default width of the characters, and we can set the origin of the characters. We don't really have to worry about changing these at the moment. For font face attributes, Family name refers to the actual name of the font that we will see after we install the font on our system and try to use it. So if we switch to the text tool really quick, this first box up here lists the family names of all of the fonts in our system. After we install our own font, its family name will show up in here. Back over in the SVG font editor, units per m here refers to the maximum height of the characters and the other attributes are the same as what we have marked with the guidelines on the page. We also don't have to worry about changing these right now, so we can just leave them on the defaults and switch to the Glyphs tab up here. Glyph is a term used to refer to each character in a font, so all the letters, numbers, and symbols in a font are called Glyphs. The Glyphs tab lets us actually start adding our drawn Glyphs to our font. Before we can do this though, all of the shapes or paths of our Glyph need to be turned into a single path. We can do this by selecting them all, then going to Path Union. Now this is all one path. Next, to add a glyph to our font, we first select the font here again, then click the Add Glyph button. Now we have a new glyph labeled Glyph 1. We can click the name again to change it. The name we choose doesn't actually affect the glyph, it just helps us to distinguish it from the others. Since this glyph is going to be a capital A, I will just type capital A as the name. The next parameter is Matching String. This is where we put the actual letter, number, etc. that the glyph will be attached to. So we can click in here, then type a capital A, and press enter. The final parameter here is advance. With this, we can set a specific width for this particular glyph. If we leave it on zero, it would just use the horizontal advance X setting here. Okay, and to add our selected drawing to the glyph, we simply click this Get Curves from Selection button. Now, to test that this actually worked correctly, we have this preview text box down here. When we type some text in here, the box above it will display the drawings we've attached to each character. If we haven't yet attached a drawing to any of the characters we typed, like right now, they will be displayed as black squares. However, if we type some capital A's in here, we can see the drawing we've attached to them. Let's now create another character. First, we can hide this layer with the capital A by clicking this eye icon down in the status bar. Then we can add another layer by going to Layer, Add Layer, and clicking the Add button. We can now draw another character. I'll go with a lowercase a this time. And because I used only one path to create this character, I don't have to worry about doing the union operation on it. Alright, now let's select our font here again, click the Add Glyph button, name it lowercase a, type a lowercase a for the matching string, 
and click Git Curves from Selection. Now we can type some lowercase a's in here to make sure it's working. One more thing we can do in the Glyphs tab is set a drawing to be used for all the missing glyphs in our font. As we saw earlier, the default drawing for missing fonts is a black square. But we can change it to something else if we want. For example, since I still have this drawing here selected, if I click this From Selection button at the top next to Missing Glyph, all missing glyphs now use this lowercase a drawing. And we can click this Reset button to make it so they use the black squares again. Alright, and the final tab we have in this dialog is the Kerning tab. Kerning refers to the spacing between a particular pair of characters, and this tab lets us adjust that spacing. So we can choose, for example, the capital A as the first glyph, and the lowercase a as the second glyph, and click Add Pair. Now we can decrease the kerning between the characters with this kerning value slider. And we can actually adjust the kerning between a character and itself as well. For example, between a capital A and a capital A. And we can type in some preview text to see how it works. Okay, so after we go through all of these steps for all the characters in our font, in order to start using the font in other software like text editors, we have to save our Inkscape document and import it into a font editor. Font editors can convert SVG fonts into formats that can be installed in our system. A font editor I recommend for this is Font Forge, which is free and open source. You should be able to easily find a tutorial for it online that explains how to convert fonts. Alright, so that's how we can create SVG fonts in Inkscape. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. Also, if you want to learn much more about Inkscape, be sure to check out my Inkscape Deep Dive course, which I provided links to in the description below. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.